We rolling? Right, so today we're going to talk about the Prime Minister of the UK, Rishi Sunak. He's a new Prime Minister. He used to be like the Treasurer or something, but he's besties with Boris Johnson. He's conservative. He seems like he grew up middle class or high class, and uh, now he's in charge of the country. Interestingly enough, though, he was born and raised a Hindu, but the reason Rishi's on topic this month is that Generation Vegan, formerly known as Million Dollar Vegan, who I've done a bit of work with and, you know, collaborated with a bit, they have actually challenged Rishi Sunak to go vegan for a month in exchange for one million pounds, and not one million pounds for Rishi to chuck in his back pocket, because I'm sure he wouldn't mind that, eh, Rishi? Hey. <laughs> but to a charity of his choice. So I kind of put a bit of pressure on him. Hey, Rishi, we want you to lead by example. And is it just about oh, Rishi like privately going vegan? No, it's more about Rishi being in such a powerful position, using this as an opportunity to campaign, to put a little bit of pressure on Rishi, because it like it's win-win. All you have to do is cut the animal products out of your life for a month and a million pounds goes to charity. Come on, Rishi, bit of pressure, mate. It's pretty easy, but also they want him to lead by example. Let's just go to the Generation Vegan open letter to Rishi. Look, Rishi, mate, they got some pretty good stuff here. Agriculture is a primary land user in the UK, covering 71% of total UK land area, around 17.5 million hectares, and animal agriculture accounts for up to 85% of this land. What? So 85% of the agricultural land in the UK is being used for animals. That's most of it. It only provides... 32% of our calories and less than half of our protein. So it uses 85% of agricultural land in the UK and only provides a third of the calories. Do the maths, Rishi. You can actually support farmers too with a plant-based food system. When we say farmers, it's always about the dairy farmers and the egg farmers, and but you can actually also support plant farmers, which vegans are big supporters of because that's the only people we support because we're always supporting the plant farmers. They go on to about protecting the, the planet. They're, they're very environmental focused with this, which I kind of get because, you know, a lot of people don't care about animals. They don't see animals as primary victims. But here it is, the last paragraph, be compassionate, Rishi. In the UK's meat, dairy and egg industries, we needlessly kill around 1.2 billion land animals for food each year. Wow, it's, it's growing, it's growing. And most of those are chickens, actually, in the UK. I think a billion of those are chickens. For example, in the dairy industry, 2.6 million cows go through unimaginable cruelty all their lives and are eventually killed for meat. Rishi, as a Hindu, as a Hindu, ahimsa is the central tenet of Hinduism. Ahimsa meaning non-violence. They then go on to talk about uh, dairy cows uh, that are pregnant when they're slaughtered. Half of the veal calves in the UK are actually now eaten in the UK, um, which is... A crazy start that's gone up thousands of male calves 29 million male chicks unwanted by the industries they're born into are killed each year within days or hours of being born pretty crazy rishi killing babies here millions and millions of babies so we hope you'll consider our sincere offer and lead the uk towards a more sustainable and promising future sounds very 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 reasonable you know rishi lead by example you're now the leader of this country so why not lead by example i mean it's a it's kind of like What's he gonna do? Because he's got a lot of uh, farmers going. Rishi, let's get, let's go, let's go, let's get into this because there's a there's a bit here. But also, um, before we get into the juicy stuff, um, there's a little bit here on. Uh, look what Gen V have done. Boom! Look at the train stations, just covered, just covered with it, with all this information. Come on, mate. The science is clear, Rishi. Look at this factory farms. Boom. Britain's a nation of animal lovers. Come on, Rishi. So are you. So are you. You're supposed to be. Look at this. Will you go million? Will you go vegan for a million pounds? Imagine if someone put that on you. A million pounds to your charity. Look at this. Even stickers. This is fantastic. The whole like even the railings when you go into the train station and the, and the escalator railings are all covered. Wow. Okay. That's pretty good. That's pretty cool. And then we got um. Oh, we've even got a... Wait, there's a news report here. A vegan here. campaign group is offering Rishi Sunak a million pounds to be paid to a charity of his choice if he goes vegan for one month. Here to tell us more about it is Generation Vegan CEO, Naomi Hallam. Hello, Naomi. Thanks for coming in. Boom. What happens if he hey, says Naomi. okay and just takes the million? That would be fantastic. <laughs> Has the charity got Wouldn't the million? It? Just go. Yes, we do. Just we go for it, Rishi. Ready to go Say and yes. We'll be out. Say you go vegan, Rishi. 
go vegan for the animals. Okay, we better edit that out because that is so cringy. All right, now, <laughs> he, def he probably just won't go vegan because I did that stupid song, I think. But anyways, let's keep going. Look at these. Look at all the people. I, I really, I really sorry I couldn't be there to be on the ground for this because this is so cool. Look at this. They've got tractors with blow up rishis on there. <laughs> Driving through London and a blow up cow. Look at that. That's absolutely crazy. <laughs> Who's driving these tractors? Are they vegans driving these tractors? Because that is, that's dedication. <laughs> and then, uh, is this the old London Bridge? Um, over the River Thames, they've got some banners here. Anyways, uh, it's a cool campaign and uh, it's a very clever campaign because, it, you know, there's a, a bunch of media that has arisen for this important t uh, talking point, important topic. So, Rishi, will he go vegan? Let's go through, let's, let's have a little little uh, delve into Rishi as a character here. I mean, in my personal an analysis of Rishi, he would care about public opinion more than making actual real change. I think he would rather keep the status quo and try to make the status quo look more squeaky clean than actually be more progressive. But, you know, we could be wrong because Rishi, born and raised as a Hindu, he believes that cows are sacred. Here he is performing the Gaul Puja. Sorry, all the Hindus out there if I've absolutely ruined the pronunciation here but here he is what are they what are they doing with this car with the paint on them but it looks like he's uh performing some type of sacred cow ritual here so rishi sunak's visit to bhaktivedanta manor and we've got prabhu prabhu bata there i remember prabhu bata a very important figure in hinduism his visit culminated in feeding the cows the manor has 62 belgian frisian cows at what has been described as the Hilton of dairy farms promoting the welfare of cows and bulls and compassionate farming techniques. Well, you know, exploiting cows, is that really compassionate? Oh, I don't know. But a hymns of dairy, they don't kill calves, they don't do they don't kill the animals, but it's just it's just not scalable and it's still treating the animals as a product and a resource. But their little video here explaining why cows need protection. Right, so cow, cow protection, when you think of protection, you might be thinking, oh, they're not endangered species, or you may be thinking it's some form of worship, but actually it's the fact that they have a conscience just the way that we do. They have feelings just the way that we do. They have emotions just the way that we do. So why don't they deserve protection? Why don't they deserve a home just the way that we do? You heard her, Rishi. Now you went down here, Rishi. You, you must agree that cows are sentient beings. Now... You believe that cows are also holy and deserve worship. And here at the manor that you that you visited, they believe cows are conscious just like we are. Now, if you believe that in principle, you have to extrapolate that out to other animals who generate, who have the capacity to generate consciousness just like cows, like chickens, pigs, fish, okay, other birds. Because if you don't extend that inherent value, that principle out to these other animals, then that is a form of speciesism where you're favoring a cow because your religion says that cows are sacred. It's like an arbitrary uh, value that you're bestowing upon one species of animal. But if you use logic and reason, you have to extrapolate that out to the other animals, don't you? From the sources that I can see, I believe that Rishi avoids eating cows because of his Hindu beliefs. I don't know if that's 100% true, but I believe he avoids eating cows. Now, Rishi... You know, half the beef in the UK comes from cows that have been slaughtered because of the dairy industry. So wouldn't it make sense to kick the dairy? And why not advocate against these industries? You know, these industries abuse, torture, kill, kidnap, infanticide, where they're killing baby uh, calves. Now, the dairy industry should be just diametrically opposed to everything you believe in. Why wouldn't you just bestow some of your Hindu principles on UK animal agriculture, practice ahimsa, and put ahimsa into law. That would be great for animals, wouldn't it? That would really protect them. Now, hypocritically, but not surprisingly, Rishi also promotes the slaughter of other animals. He's on Sky News here. Uh, carbon emissions. Is that the best place for you to be this morning? Well, well actually, that we're on, on, to... on that point, Give, seeing it's, as, no, seeing no, as we'll come, no, there, If I could ask the question, because we're almost out of time. You are at a meat market today. Why are you in a meat market when we're told to eat less meat to try and cut down on carbon emissions? I, I'm, I, I mean, I, I'm not telling anyone uh, to eat less meat. And, and you mentioned children. Actually, yesterday's budget confirmed... He skipped right over it, eh? Uh, I mean, you're out of butcher, Rishi. The environment is getting destroyed. Animals are getting chopped up behind you. There are cows that you worship or that you've been known to worship chopped up into pieces behind you. 
And then you go on to say, I'm not telling anyone to eat less meat. That there shows a lack of backbone, a lack of spine, and apologism. You're, a, you're, being, you're sitting on the fence like a p- true politician here. You're not saying, hey, you know what? Decapitating animals is actually one of the m- biggest moral crimes of our generation. And it's destroying our earth. And if we keep going like this, we won't have an earth. Who's lobbying the government to, to have the chancellor, that he was the chancellor at this time, stand in front of meat while he does a little interview on Sky News? Do you know what I mean? Like, who's doing that? Who's got that lobbying, lobbying power? Well, lobby groups like Dairy UK, NFU, National Farmers Union. There's always a reason why, why politicians say what they t- say and, and, and protect these, uh, the meat industry. But old mate Rishi served up a big plate of controversy when he <laughs> was bestowed with the title the worst waiter we've ever seen. Let's have a look at this little, little YouTube link here. Here he is. What are you doing, Rishi? Hello. How are you? Oh, may Rishi tried to serve a chopped up little bird to some vegans. Uh, Rishi Sunak is the worst waiter we've ever seen. The Chancellor serves chicken to vegans. Like, come on, Rishi, mate. Come on. I mean, I wouldn't, if I was Rishi, I wouldn't even be picking up that Rishi and putting it on the table. I'd be like, I'm not even touching that chicken. Chopped up birds, factory farmed little baby birds. Um, you know what I'd love to do, Rishi? You're not going to accept this offer, but I'm just going to say it for, for, I don't know, theatrical reasons. This is a challenge that I always put forward to people. And I will, if you ever accepted it, I would do it 100%. I would love to take you into a factory farm. You would never come. But I would love to show you what happens to these birds inside every single factory farm in the UK. I could probably emphatically make that claim. Unless someone proves me otherwise, right? At a certain point in time, when chickens are ready for harvest in this country, right? They are falling over on their face and dying in their own feces and suffering immensely and you know dying at about a four percent death rate and you'll see bins full of dead chickens who have suffered and died before they even make it to the slaughterhouse and they get dragged into crates slammed into a truck and sent to a gas chamber i would love rishi to experience that firsthand the fear and the suffering and the smell um and maybe he would think twice before making a little little error there um serving chicken to vegans Here's another bit of controversy from Rishi. We're grilling Rishi a bit, but we do want him to go vegan. But we're just showing. I'm just. I'm just showing. Like, will Rishi go vegan? Morning. Morning. I'm alright. How are you? Good. Yeah, that's right. I'm Rishi. What's your name? I'm Rishi. Dean. Dean. How are you? I'm you hungry? Hungry. Well, this, we're getting some good breakfast. You're giving some good breakfast. So you're serving him a class one carcinogen, a pig. No different to a cow, which you believe are sacred animals. No different morally in their inherent value to a cow. Have suffered to death in a gas chamber in the UK. Probably factory farmed as well. Most likely factory farmed, especially here in the UK. We're talking about high 80% of pigs are factory farmed. But I think it's 90% actually. Serving eggs as well. A product of extreme suffering to this person, Rishi. You're not really le- like y- what you're doing is a good gesture mixed with a horrible moral crime here. <laughs> you know, um, it's you're you're feeding someone the bodies of someone else who didn't want to die. So yeah, I mean, there's Rishi serving chopped up bodies of uh, pigs and the eggs from suffered hens to an individual when he could have easily scrambled up some tofu. You know what I mean? You could have easily you know, got him some hash browns. I don't know. Uh, there, there's ways of helping people who are less fortunate without gas chambering other beings who are also less fortunate. Now, we go into, we go into the Prime Minister's questions here, the PMQs. Maybe this one here, he supports 
the idea of a plant-based diet being good for the planet and uh, and good for animal rights and stuff like that. Let's have a look. That is a fact. Yep. So who does he agree with? The OBR or his Tory minister? Ah, ah that's it. Well, Here we go. Well, Mr Speaker, one of the great opportunities of Brexit is our ability to trade more with countries around the world. Okay. And, and actually, I know the honourable honourable lady will actually want to speak to many of the Welsh farmers who are enjoying selling their lamb to the new markets that we have opened up for them. That's what we'll get on and deliver. OK, so he's talking about decapitating actually and no word of a lie decapitating like you know electrically stun decapitating beautiful little baby lambs adorable dog-like creatures so a lamb is no different morally to a cow either but he's here supporting welsh farmers selling their decapitated dismembered body parts overseas to be eaten by humans instead of making the stand against it which he could easily do and you could do that this month Rishi, by going vegan for a million pounds worth of charity. Let's keep going. What else we got here in our little box of goodies here? Rishi backing British farmers. Mr. Speaker, right now we are suffering the worst outbreak of avian flu ever recorded. Okay, there's a, there's a really bad outbreak of avian flu, right? So their, their solution has to be, let's stop mass breeding chickens, actually. Let's ma stop mass breeding turkeys and other birds. Because, you know, they can cause pandemics. Look at this. Look at this avian flu. This could turn into a virus that could infect humans and kill us all. Let's, let's keep going. Let's see what their solution is here. Hundreds of thousands of birds are being destroyed to stem the spread of this terrible disease. The government's acted quickly. So they're worried about, about birds being destroyed. So maybe they care about birds, actually. Okay, let's go. To bring forward compensation to, for live birds culled to 48 hours after confirmation of disease. But even this short delay is causing significant losses to farmers in Broadland oh. as the disease wreaks havoc to flocks. Dead birds are not compensated. Okay, so they just want compensation for the people who are mass exploiting them and killing them. There's nothing to do with the birds or nothing to do with the virus that could infect and kill the entire population. It's about giving farmers compensation. I wonder who lobbied you to say that in Parliament. Was it the NFU? Who was it? Was it Chicken Lobbyers UK? Is that, is that a little bit of a, little bit of chicken money in your front pocket there, mate? Let's see what Rishi says. Today is Back British Farming Day. Oh, Back British Farming Day is an NFU campaign. Funny that, hey, funny that they're also a lobby group for farmers and now you're standing up in Parliament. Well, my right honourable friend, Take this opportunity to back British farmers and agree compensation for all affected birds from the date when disease is confirmed. Ah, oh, it's all about the farmers, all about backing farmers, but chicken farmers, what about back British potato farmers or back British, uh, you know, maybe soya farmers. You could grow a bunch of soya instead of feeding it all to the chickens and the pigs in factory farms that uh, have all these viruses spread out of them. You know, you could actually make some more soya products. Hey, how about that? How about back British soya farmers? That'd be good, wouldn't it? Anyway, here we go. The Honourable Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, who's he going to say? He's going to say, you know what, mate? You've got the wrong perspective. You should be thinking of the rights of these birds, their inherent value and how much they suffer in these factory farms. And you should also be thinking that H1N1 is a very serious bird flu that could... Uh, evolve and, and, and destroy us all. So we really got to think about phasing out these industries and compensating farmers to phase out of these industries because, you know, they cause so much suffering, environmental damage, and they're going to kill us all in, in a massive pandemic. That's what he's going to say. Let's go, Rishi. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Speaker, as someone who represents a very rural and farming community, it is a great pleasure to back British Farming Day and join with colleagues. Oh, God damn you. Rishi, what are you doing? Prabhu Bada would be very disappointed in you, mate. What is this? What is this? You're going to back the National Farmers Union campaign, which is directed at encouraging people to consume the products that are destroying the world and could cause the next pandemic and are decapitating sentient beings. So you'd prefer to... Uh... Oh, wait, wait a second, what's that in his... Is that, is that a bit of farming money in his pocket too? What is this? This is a very peculiar coincidence. Uh, but my honourable friend is right to highlight that outbreaks of avian flu this year are on track to be some of the worst on record. That's why we've toughened up biosecurity measures on poultry farms 
and I can't. Oh, so just toughen up biosecurity measures, eh? Is that what you, is, and how, how are you going to enforce that across the factory farms of the UK? You're going to stick cameras in to watch the farmers at work? To watch the farmers stick dipping their little shoes in the solution? Now, how are you going to tighten up biosecurity measures? What does that mean? What does that even mean? I can say to him that we have confirmed we will now pay compensation from the outset of planned culling rather than at the end, a request that I know he and the farming sector will warmly welcome. Okay, so... Instead of saying let's phase out the, these industries, they're actually causing uh, outbreaks and they could um, destroy us all. And you know what? What his solution is actually to avian flu is not to phase out these disgusting industries that we're only doing for taste pleasure for uh, the corpses of these little baby birds that suffer. You know, because people want their chicken wings, and because the NFU have lobbied you, and because you got to be, you know, you, oh, these poor farmers, right? These poor factory farmers who have fifty thousand birds in a shed, right? You're not talking about your old little backyard farmer here. We're talking about factory farmers. This is where bird flu happens predominantly, and these are the vessels where it's most likely to flourish in these big, massive factory farms. His solution is to tighten up biosecurity measures, whatever that means. How are you going to enforce that? Farms are enforced by themselves anyway. There's no independent scrutiny of these farms. So how are you even supposed to, you're going to send the cops in to make sure that you know, they're doing everything right? Whatever, whatever that means. And then you're going to <laughs> compensate farmers further. So these birds will die from avian flu and there's, a, there's an outbreak. You're going to give farmers more money, more subsidies. You're going to subsidize them for a problem that they're causing. That's how much you'd rather support those who are mass exploiting and killing these birds than try to put that money into evolving past these industries and making plant-based products, which would avoid this problem altogether, actually. You're not giving me too much hope that you're gonna go vegan, but you, you know, but, but the point is, I'm pointing out the, the problem to Rishi, and the solution is very simple, you know. You could lead by example, go vegan this month and beyond, and start implementing policies that help solve this issue instead of putting a band-aid on it and throwing money back at farmers because they're lobbying you. Um, here's a bunch of uh, stuff here. There's so, so much more of uh, Rishi talking to butchers, Rishi supporting beef and lamb industries on Twitter. You know, we've got Rishi uh, on animal welfare here. Rishi promises to ban animal exports and and hunting trophies. Um, why would you, why do you want to buy, uh, ban animal exports, Rishi? Do you care about animals? It's probably something to do with... Um, Wanting to, to kill the animals here and sell them on, on our shores, something to do with supporting local farmers here. It wouldn't be anything. I, I don't see it as they don't make these welfare decisions unless there's some type of benefit to the pocket here. It's not, it's not, they, they don't do this because animals have, they believe animals have inherent value and shouldn't be exploited and killed or put on these boats and ships. They would have done it for some other financial reason. That's my, that is my, uh, experienced and honest opinion on this. Although it's a good thing that the animals are not exported, I just don't think that he done it for some ethical reason. But there could be hope there. There could be hope there. Rishi promises to ban animal exports and hunting. Would you ban animal exploitation and hunting in the UK? It was hunting trophies, by the way, not hunting. So he's just, he's a massive supporter of animal farming. You know, um, that, that's that's what we can get by Rishi's rhetoric. So the article on his website, here's Delpha, du, 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 save our dairy farmers. Rishi, save our dairy farmers? We all know that dairy exploits and kills cows, who Rishi, you know, claims are holy animals and shouldn't be exploited and kills. So Rishi Sunak, um, I hope the, the Gen V letter has reached you well. I hope you've read it and analysed it and seen the logic in what Gen V are saying about, you know, the environment... The fact that you can still support British farmers without supporting animal exploitation and mass killing. Now, I can see that you are born and raised a Hindu who believe animals like cows are sacred. Why not just extrapolate that out to the other animals and to the dairy industry and things like that? I get it, you're a, you're a politician, so you have to be careful about public opinion, don't you? But when are we going to have a leader who puts the rights of animals first, puts the environment first... And no matter what it takes, start implementing real changes that are actually going to make a difference and not just cucking to the establishment, cucking to lobbyists and, you know, cucking to public opinion. You're trying to play both sides of the fence, which is very clear. Why not stand up like great people like Mahatma Gandhi stood up? You know, you could be a new leader, a real leader and someone who doesn't just talk out both sides of their mouth and uh, just repeat the same rhetoric 
verbatim as every other conservative prime minister. You could really make a stand here. You could really do something progressive and, you know, start to phase out these horrible industries because at some point in time, it's going to be too late. So there we go, Rishi Sunak. Time to go vegan, mate. What do you guys think of this campaign? You can tweet at Rishi Sunak. I'll leave that link down below. You can go to Gen V's website. You can go click. Here we go. Tweet at Rishi Sunak. And you can say, hey, Rishi, why don't you go vegan, mate, this month and a million pounds. A whole million pounds going to charity? Come on, mate. You're going to brush that off. You can just brush that million pounds off. Um, or you're too scared of pissing off the NFU. What is it? Which one is it? This is a million dollars, mate, to charity. Let's see how big that Rishi heart is. And let's see if Rishi Sunak leads by example and lives vegan.